so in the Matrix, what is this? When it happens, you know, when you see the humans turn into an agent, the agent possesses their body. What is actually happening? Let's investigate that today in this video when we cover what is agent possession, what is Smith's version of the possession, and how exactly it works with the red pills. Welcome to Jam Punch, my name is George. Possession is the process by which a program takes over a blue pill's avatar, controlling the avatar as its own shell, and projecting its own RSI in place of the humans. So if you're kind of new to the Matrix, let's recap how exactly the Matrix works, okay? So every human mind is plugged into one big central computer. So if you built this big virtual world, you'd want to make sure everything runs smoothly, wouldn't you? So that's what the machines are doing. They want to control what happens within the matrix as much as possible. Now, technically, they can change anything they want. They can remove walls, they can change the weather, they can change the way gravity works, they can make a big elephant appear on the street. We see in the matrix one when they change a window into a brick wall and it traps mouse in this building or in the matrix comic system freeze when an agent saves a mountain climber from their death. Now, of course, there are repercussions to this. Whenever they change something in the matrix it creates a kind of ripple effect and that ripple effect is called deja vu as we see in the matrix one just when the machines change that window into a brick wall neo experiences deja vu and he sees that black cat walk past so technically while they can change the entire setting of the world within the matrix they don't want to because the more they change the more it highlights how the world around is completely fake the machines need to constantly convince plugged in humans that the world is real. So they invented a way to control certain elements within the matrix without giving too much away. That control system is called agents. So in a nutshell, agent possession is when the machines take control of a human body within the matrix to cover up any slight hint that the world might be fake. They can move in and out of any software still hardwired to their system. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. So agents use the minds of plugged in humans to move within the matrix wherever they want. So in matrix one, we see the resistance finding Neo and waking him up from the matrix and removing him from his pod. Now that pod, that's more than just a little kind of thing to keep the human alive. No, that pod is the human body's entire connection to the Matrix. So when they remove Neo from this, they're basically severing his connection to the virtual world. This is why we hear the Resistance talk about a pirate signal that they broadcast up onto the surface. It's because they can't use the normal Matrix plugged in pod method to get into the Matrix. No, they have to make up their own signal, the pirate signal. So simply put, agents can't possess red pills because the red pills aren't connected to the Matrix anymore. <laughs> When does it happen? So this is a good question. So why don't they just send agents to take over everybody? Agents are basically the firewall security method within the matrix. And in a computer, a firewall reacts to threats as they happen. So if we think that the agents are there to kind of police the world of the matrix and make sure nobody realizes that it's fake, it makes sense for them only to target the people who suddenly see something that doesn't make sense. The people who suddenly see something that is impossible. For example, in the matrix one, we see that this subway man sees Trinity and Morpheus just disappear into a phone line and then he turns into Agent Smith. Remember that the machines and agents can't track the location of the people who've been unplugged because they're not plugged in anymore. So therefore the only way that the agents or the machines can find Trinity and Morpheus is to read emotions from the people still plugged in. So this subway man, he saw something impossible happen and in his brain it went, that's impossible, that's impossible, that can't happen, that can't happen. And this emotion was sent to the central computer and read by the agents of the machines. So they suddenly, as a firewall, reacted to that threat and sent an agent to take over the subway man. When the subway man saw Trinity and Morpheus disappear in that phone line, he would then probably, if he was left alone, start rejecting the matrix. He would then start looking around and going, huh, Am I even in a real place? What's going on? So the machine's solution is to use this subway man's body to fight Neo, and if he loses to Neo, so what? The newspaper headlines are just going to read local hobo accidentally killed by moving train in horrific incidents or something like that. But then what happens next? Agent Smith suddenly appears from the train driver's carriage. Why? Because Agent Smith has taken over the train driver. Why? Because the train driver suddenly saw two humans jump up and down doing all these crazy unreal stunts in front of him. Again, 
a reaction to a threat, like a firewall. However, there is one small flaw in the agent's possession method, and that is that they are vulnerable during the kind of takeover moment, you know, those couple seconds where they're taking over their body, that is when agents are vulnerable. Remember, we see in The Matrix 1, when Neo gets into that car with Trinity and Switch and all that, Switch pulls a gun on Neo. Trinity says, it's necessary for our protection. The reason for that is that Neo is still plugged into the Matrix, and he's got that tracker thing in his abdomen. So the agents are reading Neo's every move. They might look at his movements and go, huh, why is he getting into this random car in the middle of the night? So Switch pulls the gun on Neo and says, do what we say. If you suddenly turn into an agent, we're going to shoot you. In The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, we see that Smith has a brand new type of possession, something more like a virus. At the end of Matrix 1, we see that Neo kills Agent Smith, and this is the first time an agent has ever been killed according to Morpheus. So then, just like any other program, he was given the choice to either exile within The Matrix or be deleted. Smith chose exile. The same thing that drove Smith to choose exile is the same thing that gave him his new super possession powers. The Oracle. I explained the Oracle's secret plot in my video up here, so please click that if you want to see. But basically, that is the secret story behind the whole Matrix trilogy, is the Oracle planned the whole truce. She forced Neo and the machines to work together to destroy Smith, and she had to do that by giving Smith some ungodly power that would potentially threaten both humans and machines. The Smith avatar in The Matrix Reloaded can put his hand into another program or exile or red pill's chest and gradually turn them into another Smith. This, for the first time ever, is a threat to the machines as well. There are a few differences between Smith's version of the possession and normal agent possession. So one of them is that he can't do it remotely. Normally an agent can just go blah, blah, blah and suddenly in anywhere in the entire world they can change into a plugged in human. Smith can't do that. Smith needs to actually touch them. He needs to touch them with his hand and gradually spread over. This is just like a virus. A virus cell in a human body or a virus file in a computer. It needs to touch things, it needs to go next to them, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, and gradually assimilate everything. This is the kind of ongoing theme with Smith. His possession is he is becoming a virus. Another difference is unlike the other normal possessions of the normal agents, a Smith possession manages to kind of retain the powers of the thing that he takes over. We see this in the Matrix Revolutions when he assimilates the Oracle and then he's able to use the Oracle's foresight and plan the future. I did another little video about that, you can watch by clicking up here. Another difference, and this is maybe the main one, is Smith's possession was able to affect everyone. He could even infect a human body in the real world, as we see with Bane in the Matrix Revolutions. This is again, would be from the Oracle creating some kind of biological data within the virus program that she gave Smith, so that not only would it infect the kind of uh, digital RSI of Bane, but it would go into his human body as well. So what happens to plugged in humans as they're being possessed? Because that never really gets addressed in the films. We see in the Matrix comic Return of the Prodigal Son that the main character Jimmy, he gets possessed by an agent, then blacks out, wakes up to see that all the people around him have suddenly been killed. So in his own words, he simply can't remember what happened. He just blacks out, wakes up, everyone's dead. And then he has to just wake up and deal with the fact that he has supposedly killed all these people. But what happens when a human gets possessed and becomes injured and then wakes up from the possession? This happens in the Matrix comic day in, day out, when we see this group of uh, plugged-in humans get taken over by agents because they're trying to fight some red pills. There's a shootout, big explosions, etc. During the shootout, one of the agents loses their forearm. It's this gory kind of injury, they lose their entire forearm in an explosion. This agent then leaves the human body. The human body wakes up, no longer unconscious, looks down and sees that they also have lost their forearm. So that is what happens when humans get possessed by agents. All the injuries are real.